So at this point we've got our characters moving around the screen with a velocity vector. Uh, we'll call this one V, why not? And we've learned how to make nice smooth lines with them. And I'm going to show you a trick now of how to make the character not move very jerky. We want smooth movement. We don't want him going from standing completely still all the way to full speed in an instant. We want to, if I can have neat enough handwriting, interpolate. We want to interpolate his movement. Interpolate means to slowly move him from standing to full speed, not all at once. Uh, you'll also see this called lerp. Lerp. Why is it called lerp? I don't know. They took the L and put it in front of the erp or something. It's, I don't know. But it's called lerp. You'll see it called lerp or interpolate. And I'll draw you a nice picture of what it means in green. So let's say I'm going to draw you a graph because I freaking love graphs. And this on the bottom will be time, and this is whatever our value is. So it starts here, and then let's say it goes up to there. So as time goes forward, then our velocity slowly goes up. It's not like if, if I say v equals, say, 4, okay? And then later on in the code, I could say v equals 10, and it'll slam that value directly up to 10. It'll be, it'll be 4, 4, 4, 4, 10. 10, 10, 10, 10. That's not what we want. This is jerky, herky-jerky, and it's ugly. So we want to smoothly go from one value to another. And I'm going to show you eventually a few ways of doing this, but we're going to start with um, one of the simpler ones. It's called the approach function. Approach. And it takes three values. G is the goal. So this here would be our goal. This will be G. We start, we start down here, and we want to approach our goal value. And then it also takes the current value. I'm going to call that C. So if, if, we're, if we happen to be about halfway to our goal, then we might be right here on our curve. C is our current value. And then a delta value, let's say delta T, which represents how far we want to approach. So for example, if we're, let's say this right here is our delta t, this, this distance. So we start here at c, and we want to approach delta t, and so what we're going to end up a little bit higher on the curve. And of course, we want to use small delta t's, just like last time. If, if you remember our previous video on delta t, we want to take small steps so that it looks like a smooth movement. Uh, so let's just block out a simple version of this function, we're going to say if the current value is less than the goal value, then we'll return return current value plus whatever that delta is. Okay, and then otherwise, otherwise the current value is not less than the goal value, so we've reached our goal, and we'll just return g. My handwriting is made a lot worse by the by the tablet, so sorry about that. Um, so then after that, what's going to happen is the return value from here is going to be fed back into the approach function in the next frame of the game, in the next game loop frame. And so we're going to very slowly, we'll be here and then 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 Finally, we'll reach the goal, and so we'll get that nice, smooth interpolation. So let's go to the code and see how it works. All right, so let's implement this approach function. I'm going to do it in a slightly different way because I need to account for uh, an edge case. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the difference between the goal, where we're going to, and the current, where we're at now. Uh, you can think of this difference as how far left do we have to go before we get to our goal. So, uh, if the difference is greater than dt, in other words, if dt is not enough to take us to our goal, then we're going to return the current plus the, plus the dt. So we're just going to return a, uh, one step farther to our goal. 
But here's the edge case. If the goal is lower than the current, in other words, if we're interpolating in the downward direction, if our value is getting lower, <clears throat> then the difference is going to be negative. It's going to be a negative number. And so we have to flip this around. We have to say if it's less than negative dt, OK? So if the, <clears throat> the distance we have to go is not enough to get us to our goal in the negative direction, then we'll return fl uh, current minus dt. So now we have an approach function that can either interpolate us up or down. And if we are in range of our goal, then we'll just return the goal. OK, that is the approach function. Now let's put it into action. Uh, I have here some crazy new stuff you haven't seen. And let me show you why, because I'm doing something pretty cool. I'm, I've implemented a little proto game. Here it is. Here's my little red box character, surrounded by a few green box characters. And it's just a small prototype that we're going to use from here on out as a test bed to implement all the things that we're doing. And as you can see, the velocity is kind of herky-jerky. He's either moving at full speed or he's completely stopped. And we want to do something about that. So let's look at how this works. And we'll fix it. So every, every time, this is a new method that gets called, as you can see in this comment, when the player presses a key. And what I'm doing here, here's WASD, the classic movement controls for a first person shooter. And every time the player presses one of those, I set the velocity of the box that you saw. So when the player presses W, the velocity gets set to the Z velocity gets set to 15, and player presses A, the X velocity gets set to 15, and so on. It makes the player move like you saw before. So instead of setting the velocity directly, this time I'm going to set the velocity goal instead. So we're setting the goal velocity and we're going to lerp up to that goal elsewhere in the code. Down here we have a key release method which gets pressed when which gets called when the player releases a key. So if you release the W key, then you set the velocity back to zero. And so similarly we're gonna oops, oops we're gonna set the velocity goal to zero instead of the velocity. So when the player lets go of the key, our goal will be zero and we'll smoothly interpolate down to a zero velocity. I hope that made sense. So here's our update function from before, and this is where we're going to do the dirty work of interpolating. So our new velocity equals, let's call our approach function. Uh, let's see, wait, wait, what, what did we need first? Our goal. So let's give it our goal x, and then next we need the current, so give it the current velocity x and then dt but dt is actually too slow so i'm going to ramp it up i'm going to say times 20 just so that it's a it's a little bit speedier now i'm going to do the same thing that i did with x i'm going to do it again with z in this game x is forward and backwards z is left and right and y is up and down so i'm not going to do it with y because we don't we don't need to do it with y we only need to interpolate it as the player moves around uh, x and z. So that should do it. Let's run this baby and see what's up. There we go. So now you can see that the, the character is very slidey. It's like he's sliding on ice. It's very, uh, ooh, OK. But it's definitely interpolating our velocity, which is what we wanted. So all we have to do, I think, is turn this value up a little bit to 50 or so. You can screw around with what you multiply into dt. The more you multiply in, the more responsive it'll be. As you can see now, it, it's much more responsive. He doesn't look as much like he's sliding on ice. I'm going to crank it up to 80, see what we get there. There we go. It's uh, even sharper now. So this game, I'm actually, I've actually uploaded it to GitHub. You can see a link down in the description. All you need is the free version of Visual Studio 2010. And you can go in there and screw with it and look at the code, see how it works, change it yourself, which is the best way to learn. And it'll help you follow along with the, uh, with the videos I'm doing so far.
And from now on, I'm going to be uploading all the source code to GitHub so that you can see how everything works and play with it yourself. So I'll see you next time.